for me. Baby, do the speakers out. Because if your brother puts something there, it's going to start making noise. Ah, you remember the last time the earning machine, eh? You felt that there's heat and steam that comes out. Don't even try to touch it. Eh? Blessed evening, everybody. Let me first put everything well. Yes. We are going to be ironing and soaking here. Yes, multitasking. Before I, I give my boys evening food, you understand? Come in, everybody. Shalom, shalom, everyone. I am just on Facebook, the page, and I'm also on Instagram. Because, you know, on Instagram, it's difficult to upload and put these things online. Hi, Sister Sharon. Sis, I'm still continuing. Look at your sister. <laughs> sister Sharon, I'm not going to complain. That this will be, I think, tomorrow will be the last day of ironing. I'm almost done with the coats. Today I'm just ironing the last few things that are still last, last. You understand, sis? Blessed day, everybody. I greet all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We are about to have a very important discussion. That's why I said, let me do it now. After I cooked, I did everything. I just have to make chicken for the boys before we eat. We are going to talk about weeds and make up fake nails. I'm going to tell you my testimony of my life and why I stopped wearing wigs and who told me to stop because I did not stop for men or to try to act or just for a short time. It is permanent. Wherever I'm going in my life, I will never put makeup on. Just like when I travel and I meet big stars and artists, I'm sure those who don't believe that I come out natural, they think, oh, when I go and shoot something big, I'll make up, but I don't make up. I show up like this. And in fact, this hair, you better get used to it because it's the only one I will rock. And you know something that I've not told a lot of people that a lot of you don't know about me is that I have a very sensitive head. I have a very sensitive scalp. I suffered from migraines my whole life. So when it comes to doing things with my hair, I am not the type that you have to, even myself, when I do things, sometimes you people see me twist things online. I'm doing my hair, I'm twisting my hair. Five, 20 minutes later on after the video is done, I start to undo it because I get headaches and I like my hair simple. Even right now, I'm going to go to the barber shop. They need to level it because it grows very quick and it looks like it's small, but it's a lot. I'm telling you the truth and I do not have time to start doing con, con, con. That is something about my hair. But when it comes to wig, I'm going to explain everything. Before I met Jesus Christ, I used to make music for the world. I used to travel a lot and that God gave me an opportunity to get to meet a lot of different people in my life. So we are going to get started. Before we get started, I greet all of you and welcome all of you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I greet all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, the Son of the living God, the only God who is able and capable, the only God who is God, everlasting God on his own, mighty, powerful, creator of each and everything, and never made not even one mistake. Today I'm doing this because we are going to do it the whole week. We are going to go deep into makeup, and we are going to start it first with makeup, and then the Holy Spirit, also the wisdom he put on me. So this whole week we are going to be busy with this topic. Because my sisters, I want us to also understand something. First things first, when I worked in the world, sorry, I'm not going to be looking at you people reading comments. I just want to be ironing. I pray you pardon with me. May God bless all of you. Eh? So, first things first, my brothers and sisters. Before I met Jesus, I lived in the world. I've not been a saint. I'm not a saint. I'm a sinner who has fallen short of the glory. I've done so many things that I'm not proud of in my life. Some things you will not even believe it. I have done a lot of things in my life that I'm not proud of. And also, I was somebody that tried a lot of things because that's how I was. That's how the devil could use me for trying things. Growing up as a girl with this type of skin tone was very difficult. First things first. Any, many, hello, my darling. To all of you, my sisters, who I don't greet by name, forgive me, please. Eh? But I greet all of you, and I love all of you, and I appreciate all of you, and God bless all of you. Also, my brothers, not just sisters, brothers. Too. So, when I was growing up, the first things first that I learned was that my skin in my society as Africans, the, the darker you are, the ugly you are. That's what it cause, it's considered and taught. So growing up with this skin complexion and the, and the gift and talent that I have, it didn't match well, well in my society and community. But I guess it's the whole entire world because it's even in America. It's wherever you go. I was made fun of my skin tone. And as I was growing up, 
with the privilege of starting to travel abroad and do things as a young woman, music taking me different places. I saw women that would do makeup, Brazilian hair, waxing, bleaching, everything you can think of. And I was always called blacky. I think a lot of you, you are Zambians, you know how it is in your families. If one of you is the darkest, it's called blacky. Me, I was called Chiniga or blacky. That was my name. So, when I started growing up and becoming a woman, turning into a woman, I tra traveling around, seeing women, how they would bleach their skin. It didn't sit well with me. I tried to bleach my skin, but God knew that he had a greater purpose for me and I had to stay natural because I would have not gotten anywhere with it. And my mother who raised me, she was bleached, my stepmother. And one thing that she told me, especially after she met God, she stopped. And after she stopped, her skin ran out. So my mother also told me, if you look at me, you can choose. Use me as your example. She was honest, and I thank her for that. So I tried bleaching. Bleaching did not work, Sister Sharon. I bleached once. It broke out of my body like a demon from the pit of hell. God saved me, me thinking that my skin is tough like elephant. God saved me, my sisters. Thank you, Jesus. That's how I stopped with the bleaching. Bleaching stopped, makeup came out, fake hair and all of that. Brothers and sisters, I will not lie. I used to buy Brazilian hair and here it cost a thousand euros to buy a whole full lace if you want it customized. Ah, I was a shopper. God is my witness. I had every wig you can think of. Sharon knows when she met me, I was giving each person three or four pairs of wigs. Brand new, still good. And the funny thing is that no matter how much I bought these clo uh, wigs, I mean, I still wouldn't use them so much. Every time I used the wig, especially a sew-in, it didn't work. So when I met Papa Rocafera, I passed through a lot with discovering who I am and loving who I am. And I can say this credit and God bless Sister D because when I discovered there was a woman who looked like me, they used to tell me, you are Sister D. So the fact that there was somebody who was famous, she, she was a singer, celebrity, and they said, I look like her. I took that one to my head and I told my soul and my spirit and my body and my heart that you are beautiful, you are Sister D. So even if it was making fun of me like a Sister D, I, I took that Sister D verb to all aspects. I applied it to my life. I would, I even discovered that Vaseline, they gry, 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 way, way on this skin and they... When you see me coming, it will be choco choco modupe like puff puff. <laughs> That's how I did it. So growing up, I met my husband and I'm going to, I'm not telling the story of my life, but I want to talk about makeup and where I'm coming from just to give you a small background, I beg. That's how I met Papa Rocafera. By the time I met Papa Rocafera, I used to do wigs and I used to love color wigs because I was black. I would do color wigs. I used to tell my, uh, my hairdressers, Zodwa and Ngawa were the only two people who did it. So I used to tell them, I said, Bururu, I want to make sure that I'm ging, ring, 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 because this skin doesn't show, but at least when I'm coming, they shall see the hair. Forgive the heat look here it is doing on the screen. So my brothers and sisters, that's how I was doing wigs. But one thing about wigs that I had a problem with is that I couldn't keep them for a long time. They just... They would itch. The type of itching you would not even believe it. So by the time I traveled out of Zambia to come here as Papa Rokafeda's girlfriend the first time, I wanted to do my hair so much because of shame of working with our African hair. That's how Papa Rokafeda took me to a celebrity. There's a celebrity here in Holland. She's, she's like the Aretha Franklin of Holland. Her name is Shema Ross. That's how Papa Rokafeda took me to the house of Shema Ross. Her sister, her young sister does hair. That's how I went to Den Haag. She did my hair. She did my hair. I came back home. Three days later on, I and did that hair. And it was not cheap because, you know, a celebrity hairdresser, I think we spent almost 800 euros in that house plus the wig. And you know that wig that, not Brazilian, but the one that was, Janet. You remember the, who remember Janet? The one that was cheap, but she was a cousin to Brazilian because I didn't like Brazilian because with my skin and the Brazilian hair, if they look like mumu, you could see it's not your hair. That's how Jesus was really convicting me even in that time. But I did not want to listen. Stubborn me, see? <laughs> not knowing that I'm ruining my money, which would have I bought two houses with all the things that I did for vanity. Jesus have mercy on me. My sisters, that's how I undid the hair. Papa Rokafera would help me. When he was my boyfriend and husband, we just met. 
He was the one that used to bump the head. Bump, bump, bump. When they each, I give the white man a sign and say, baby, they each, my husband, they come. Bump, bump, bump. Ha. Now, so we were eating. Janet, human hair. Ha. Doreen will understand. <laughs> Janet is not even the best, sister Doreen, please. It's not the best because where the story is going, you're going to throw away your wigs. What happened to me? My sisters, that's how the husband was the bump, bump, bump. And I was really full of myself. I, I thought that it was love because the man used to bump, bump. Even in front of his mama and his papa, bump, bump, bump. People think you're assaulting your wife. You want killer. No, sisters, Karen Shawar. <laughs> he was doing it for love. Bump, bump, bump. He was bump, bump. Everywhere I go, stick in my back so that I can put it in between. Chaka, 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 chaka. Like his word. Jesus. Thank you for delivering me from this nyaka, nyaka demon. Nyaka nyaka satan. Chi nyaka nyaka di satan. Let me testify. My sisters, I reached a point. Shops came. Ari Express came. There are those shops that were true at first to make the company grow. I was a member. I was one of the first before Ari Express was even known to any man. <laughs> That's how addicted I was to shopping. And here there are people who know if you're an addict. You get benefits. Even right now, when I shop, every shop that I used to be, I am a member, I get discount for my children. I don't even go in stores, me. I shop online. I will not lie to anybody. Sharon knows I'm overwhelmed inside the stores. Papa Rockefeller knows, even for my husband. I shop everything online. If it's small, big, I send it back. My sisters, now bam, 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 finish. That's how human hair came with the less. Me, I would buy the ones that you don't need to glue. I would buy the ones that you just need to wear because I couldn't stay long with them. I had to take it off. I would be in the club with my Antillian Suriname friends. We are enjoying. Go down, come on. I got, I just feel the itching. I just take the hair right there out on the stage. I put it in my armpit. My friends, they start to move away like they don't. I say, shut up, idiots. Shut up in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, by that time, I discovered Emanuela. And all my friends knew my comedy style. Whatever country you came from, Philippines, Antilles, and Suriname, Morocco, and they knew it. So when they see me do that weak thing, the, most of them, if they see me even now, they would say the term of Emanuela. This is not my face. This is my face. I said, this is the real me. This is the real me. One and one. This is the real me. I would take it off. When I'm performing after stage, I take it off. When the people want to meet me, greet, greet, hey, you know, they're talking to me, selling my CDs and the things that I was selling. I, I merchandise. You see them, they see my head, they, they see them. And I used to always keep it clean, sharp, soft, so that my husband, because it was also, I want to just tell you something also why I discovered to like short hair. I found out that there's sensation in this scalp. <laughs> Today you will laugh and learn. Come on, carry the go. <laughs> I found out that there's sensation, what they call in Dutch, intense cacao. There was feeling here. So when I am bored, my husband giving me kiss. We connect. It's like another foreplay. I found out that my husband, Modupe, Sharon, you know your brother. Miko. I found out that your brother, they playing gere and gere mm, on top of my body. He was playing gere and gere. I said, that's why this man, every time I wear a wig, I come to him. Baby, how do I look like? He said, you want me to lie or you want me to tell you the truth? I said, I just want you to be a husband. And if you want to be a happy husband, I said, I don't want to lie. This don't look good. And I can't stand it. <laughs> and if you want a man who love wig, please. Go America. Don't come to Europe. They are cheap. Oh. I'm not spending my money on this wig. The wigs I had to buy for myself. And I had to, to hide because Papa Rocafera would rather give 1000 to my sisters in Zambia to do something with it before I put it on my head. So he would get vexed in him. In him let me tell you, that's the only time I see Obodoibo. I say you are cheap, the Dutch. That's why you are the proud of all white men, the cheapest. African sisters, if you're catching fish, don't catch dash fish. <laughs> dash fish, they know how to make you feel good in natural hair that you'll never put wig again. After I found out the benefits. Anyway, carry they go. So I started less trans, this and that. It still didn't work. And makeup, yeah, I was like a makeup studio. Because you know, as African people, when we discover something, just like shit, 
You buy one shade, different colors, same design, but different colors. <laughs> Momo, that's why you won't be rich. <laughs> Your friends, they will they wear jean for safari until Christmas. <laughs> Jehovah, Jehovah, knowledge is power, wisdom is key. Hey, Redeemer, let me tell you, my sisters, that's how I discovered makeup. Mm? Makeup was another journey. Every time I put makeup on and I would only put makeup for work, never for personal use or when I go to the club. And in the club, when the heat is too much and the makeup, they trouble me. I used to move with wipes. I would go to the bathroom. My friends, they knew we don't. Before we left the house, the guys would tell me, today you are not going to do us like that. If you cannot manage this makeup, I'm doing the makeup. You are going to hear Lulu say, but this makeup, when you just reach by the, by, by, by the toilet, you begin to take the wipe out and you wipe this thing out. Why you mash on this thing now? That's my Antillian, my uh, St. Martin friend. I say get out of here. I catch fish. So I need to just beautify myself. And this was not because I wanted. It's because my environment and the women around me. Yeah, even after I gave birth, this thing of wanting fashion. Instead of allowing the belly to go in. I was playing with friends who wanted us to meet for party. With theme of dressing up. When I wear a dress. It don't look like hyena. <laughs> Kode. Kode. David. Yeah. Come here. Come and close your Nintendo Switch. It's playing with things from the Nintendo Switch. If one thing is missing, the Nintendo Switch is useless. Come and put your things where well. My sisters, it don't look like hyena in West Trainer. Because I wanted to fit in. Not because I thought I needed it. And because every woman around me was dressing up. So even me, Papa Rokafeda was surprised. The girl that he met in Zambia was so relaxed. But the girl that came here, she wanted to start faking it. And God taught me a lesson. I learned the hard way. My sisters, by that time, I was dressing up. Dress here, dress there. Shoes here, shoes there. Two pairs, if I like it too much, three pairs. Same design, different colors. Mumu. My sisters, that's how I reached the point. Where I couldn't fake it anymore. And the more I hung around with my guy friends, I learned how comfortable I was and how I loved it. So by the time that I'm, I stopped wearing makeup already, even before I met Jesus, but I would wear it every now and then. So by the time I met God, I remember when I started the first year of ministry when I came here. People would see me dress up, earrings, everything. I would come like I'm going somewhere out of the house. Imagine, dress up, dress up, to come. Sit behind the computer, start and say hello. So the Lord one day make me see VJ. <laughs> the way he used reverse psychology because Jesus knows that me have sense of humor. So if you want to get me, you can also put it in a joking way. I'll get it and and get deep and serious. The Lord showed me vision of how he was telling me, like in a dream, like we are talking, like two friends, like Sharon and me. Like my sis, like yes, sis. You know me, I hate fake people, eh? I hate the fake demon. I'm like, yeah, even me, I hate it. You know, fake demon wearing makeup, putting nails and wigs. I, I hear, eh? I start to see in the vision. Now me, get ready in my bedroom or my charade, powdering myself, make ripping myself just to come and sit behind camera to come and do hair. Ah, 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 ah. Go there. Is he playing with electricity? I don't like it. Oh, come and remove the, the, the Nintendo Switch a charger. You left it on. You left the Nintendo Switch charger on, my Lord. My sisters, that's how the Lord showed me myself. I didn't get the vision where, where I was learning. I was a baby Christian just getting in. So I, I ignored it, but I laughed. Days passed. I was wearing wig. I, I just heard the Lord start to talk to me. He said, you know, you have to let go of these things if you want me to come in deep. I even told the Lord, I told the Holy Spirit, I said, C.C.Y. and Tasha Cobbs, they all look cute and they all slain. And yet they manifest your power. The Lord said, everybody can manifest my power. But I don't force. If you want to know me, I said, if you want me to come in deep, you have to let go of these things. And the Lord said, I don't force. I, have, I come to each and every one of you individually. It is up to Sharon, me, Inimini mini, and the one that loves me to drop the things of this world. So when I heard that, the next day didn't even pass. I shaved all my hair first to disconnect myself 
because the Lord showed me something that this hair that we put of other people, he said, can it be normal? How can you put hair of somebody else that is dead? Because some of this hair that you put on of wigs, people are dead, died in a very nasty way. And some people give you this fake hair that you put on your head, this Janet, this Peruvian and Brazilian. Because they are poor, they want to put food on their family's table. So rich people go to their cities, to their villages and say, I will pay you money if you give me this hair. So when I heard that, I woke up the next day. Sharon remembers that day very well. Sharon, were you there? Did I meet you already, sis, by then? I believe so, sis, because you, but that, by that time, that was when I started giving out the wigs to the women in the zoo. And because I didn't have knowledge, I thought that God only hates it for me because I'm an apostle. No, God reminded me again, I do not force. So the ones who wanted, I said, okay. My sisters, that's how the next day I shaved all my head like a baby baton. I shaved all of it. And then I came on live with a nice Janet wig. Slaying. And I said, hello, my brothers and sisters. I would just like to introduce the real me from now on. I don't want to be fake. The Lord has caught me out. You don't like this nonsense of niaga niaga. And he has told me what I need to do. So I choose Jesus. And I would like to introduce all of you to the real Mina. So I took the wig off in Imini. If you look for all my old videos, you'll find it is still on Facebook. <laughs> now, so I took off the wig. Pa! My head was shining like the glory of the Lord. You could see the movement when the, the Lord was hovering, when the Spirit of the Lord was hovering upon the water. Now, so it was grazing, Modope. Now, so it was grazing, Sharon. They all laughed at me. And that's how I started explaining to them that God has convicted me this hair that we are wearing is not of him fearfully and wonderfully made in his image why would he want you to put other people's hair and the lord even called he said this a uh, sister sharon who are these people these jews that live in a uh, uk these jews that put on fake hair on top of a uh, 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 wig on top of their real, real hair, and they say it's covering and they think the lord is uh, uh, is happy with it that's how the lord told me all of them they are doing nonsense Hair is not something you can buy. Hair grows out of the scalp. It is yours. It is your glory. It is the root and foundation. It is G DNA, genetics. It is something spiritually from God that is imparted in you that you will never, 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 ever. You cannot buy. You have to grow it. You cannot manipulate it. The Lord said, can you imagine how ridiculous and stupid you look? You hide your own hair to put other people's hair. And that's how I stopped wearing wigs and I gave out whoever wanted them. And the Lord also said he does not want me to wear makeup. Because I used to put makeup. Especially wanting to please you people online here. And if you are bullied, you succumb. Because you don't want to get bad comments. You want people to fit in. I had to learn the hard way. And that's why when I stand up for myself, I they talk so that the demon that comes send you here never send me back to hell. I would rather insult you, Satan, and your children before I go back to hell. With everything that I've given up, idiot, now go come in my face and you say I insult. It's your problem, Satan. My sisters, my brothers, me, I insult Satan. Proudly and loudly and in public and I don't hide. Please, in Jesus' name. And I do it with every intention. And I mean the word when I'm... Uh, it be like I'm spitting it out from the gut and the core of the foundation of my fallopian tube where the Lord has bestowed the glory of the Lord. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, man of God. <laughs> Sister Sharon, you hear my voice? So is it interpretation? My sisters, that's how God showed me he started talking to me about makeup. Hey, 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 Kode. Kode. Come and see you. Pay time. In fact, Peter, come. I'm not just calling one child. I have so many children in there. Come. They think I have 10 children. People wonder. They ask me how many children I have. I have 17. And their father is 10. The three of them is six. Three, three each. You can understand. <laughs> the Holy Ghost. The blood of Jesus. My sisters. That's how the Lord started to show me things. And then I was still doing makeup every now and then. Lipstick, this and that. And I had those things in my house. God did not like it. 
He said, I called you when you did not have any makeup. And now I start to make you a little bit known on social media. You are starting to do all of these things. That's how I stopped. And then I went into the lecturing of wisdom. God started to show me what these things are. He said, first things first, make up. Like my husband said to me one time, make up is to make up. Make it up. It's not true. Even the word make up tells you what it is. Fake. Make up. Make up. It did not come together with us in the womb. We found it in this wicked world. And it was a distraction and a delusion and illusion to distract our lives, our finances. Makeup does not just take away from our finances. Makeup takes away from us spiritually in a way that that's why when you see women of God wearing makeup, a lot of them tell me, those who want to still wear makeup. I have sisters even in this chat that you people say you have born again and you are still wearing makeup. I'm not going to fight you because it is not for me to convict you. Most of you, Holy Spirit has already visited you. Most of you, when you put makeup and you look in the mirror, you don't see yourself. God really took me through a journey that when I put makeup, you see, God does not lie. The Holy Spirit will just tell me, you look ugly. What is this demon? Yes. And I still went out. I didn't know that it was Jesus speaking. I thought that it was the devil feeling jealous for me. Yes. So this was even when I was still in the world. Every time I was natural on the, on the camera, I was happy. Look at him. But every time I put that rubbish makeup, there was a voice behind me that said, you are ugly. What is this thing that you are? And this is not a true you. And one thing that makeup does is take away from your mind and your spirit, your soul. Because people remember to put makeup even when they are going to a funeral. That's how delusion of the devil has got you. No priority, no order. And the Lord taught me that in the long term, I was giving you money. I was blessing you. Every money you put to make up will never come back. Regrets that we cannot even sit in. Some of us right now, we are on clothes of borrowing and renting. Because this society told you that that's how a woman needs to look. I want to put makeup. If it was allowed by God, I would have done it. Most women think I'm stupid. I've lost it. Or oh, when, you, when you get convicted by the Holy Spirit, this one is not right. She's losing it. No. It is not a choice that I made. It is something that my master told me. It's like the, a commandment. When God tells me he doesn't want me to do this, I stop. Whatever God doesn't want me to take part in, I stop. And believe me, I do stand on stage where women are dressed up and I look like I'm the most dirty of them all. Because you know why? The eye of this world has projected that a natural woman is dirty. But the Lord says he doesn't know a woman with all these things. Make her. He told me that we lie to ourselves. And he will not convict anybody who doesn't want to be convicted and fall. God does not force us to give up. It's for you to accept him. And if you want to walk with him, you're going to leave things behind. But a lot of us, we are liars. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Jesus has shown you miracle. You are lucky. You are very lucky. And you see how we reign. You see how we reign. <laughs> leave, it, I'm the one, leave it there. Leave it. I'm the one who's going to lift it. Leave it. He was playing with rubbish there. <laughs> My sisters, the thing fell down. He tried to shake things because you know him is a climber and a shaker. Boys, play nice with each other. The Lord has shown him. 
Yeah. And you know what? It's by the Holy Spirit because the things are heavy, Sister Sharon, because you know, I was fixing up my house, the beds and everything. They had to be dismantled and remade again. So there are still certain things that we have not put our tools that are in the house. That's the thing that fell on him. But uh, you should see him. He ran, the Holy Spirit told him, get out of here because if you do that, <laughs> Lord, I thank you in fact. The Lord walked with you in ways that you will never understand. And then you went like that with your Chinese legs. Mm -hmm. Try. Try again. Me, I always leave you for one try so you can learn. Because if you don't, uh -huh, you go continue trying. That's why even with the ironing machine, he tried. He just felt some heat of the steam. Yeah? He don't play with the ironing machine anymore. I said, praise the Lord. So my sisters, when it came to that point of looking at how much my life was destroyed by trying to fit in in this world, by buying clothes and doing things, because all my friends were doing it. And let me tell you, vanity and fashion, it makes you forget that you have to pay rent. It makes rent and the things of your life less priority. People are looking good out here. They're half of the women that are wearing makeup and wig online. They don't even have one piece of land for their children. Not because they are poor. My sisters, the same vanity is taking away from your wisdom and your life. Every time I used to wear those things, something was not right. A demon came in. God doesn't force us, my sisters. If you want to walk with Jesus, you have to give up. Take up, take the cross. He did not, you come the way you are, but he's going to change you. You don't stay the way you are. And I don't know why people are not talking about the issue of makeup. Because when it comes to me, the way the Lord makes me feel about this issue. God is so angry with a black woman. God is so angry with a black woman. Because black women, even in your profile pictures right now, my sisters, look at yourselves. Look at yourselves. Anybody who is wearing a wig right now, I want you to look at yourself from the back like that. Touch that hair and look at yourself. Look at your skin tone. I believe God gave us hair that fits our skin tone, our posture and everything to the T, including the spirit, the soul and everything. Every time we wear other people's hair, it's like confusion. It's like confusion. And the worst thing of it, to the black woman, that's what Satan used to still make Africa poor. Because in Africa, it doesn't matter how poor you are. They all have Brazilian hair. Imagine that you have access to, to vanity, but you don't have access to land for your children. You don't have access for, for, for school fees, for college. My sisters, every vanity wig and makeup you are putting on is money for our children to go to college. And yet we are jealousing other people out here in the world. Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh my God. Hey, 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 these people full of, you have jealousing people who worked hard. Sacrifice, endurance, and God gave us all we need. God has given us all we need. My sister wrote here, listen, I was getting dressed up to put on my wig and I couldn't. I had to put on some gel. That message convicted me. My sister, praise the Lord that you put on gel that day. The spirits. I had, it only took God to tell you people what I went through, what wigs did to me and why I get these headaches, the things that I introduced myself in my life. You know those thoughts? Negative evil thoughts? 
I didn't know where they came from. Those voices that were speaking, I didn't know where they came from. The wigs. The wigs. The wigs were speaking against my own scalp, against my own foundation that God created me with. The wigs entangled me. That I became a fool, I didn't even realize it. That I gave up every financial blessing that God was giving me and gave my children. To the point where I was so ashamed. When we are broke is when you realize all oh, my money. And if I'm not broke because I, I'm broke because I didn't invest in anything. I didn't apply wisdom in anything. You are dressing up for people online who are actually having more big difficulties than you. And the, the worst thing about how Satan makes jealousy, the same people you are dressing up, they tell you it's not good enough. So women go to bleach. Women go to do surgery. The worst trainers that I see in this world. Black women don't sit anymore. These idiots. I'm sorry, my sisters. I call us black women. Idiots. Fools. You see all of them. You never see white women be gullible like them. As we are fools, black women. See hundreds and thousands of us. Anybody make a product. Now us, the devil gloats over the most. How many of you black women are moving around with waist trainer from morning to evening? Are you a normal human being, you? Eh? Are you normal? The demons keep telling you that you are not beautiful. And you come out here, advertise products, bleaching your skins. You think God is happy. My God. When I started to wear a, a, how you call them? Fat corrections. Waist trainers. A, a panties that correct your fat and everything. My brothers and sisters, the spirit of sexual morality came in. Me, my whole life, who has never been a girl, even when it comes to posing, the only pose I know which my family, nay, it almost, it almost pain you. The only pose I used to know was the pose for peace. I think now this one be peace. Is that, right? that was the only one. The sexual morality demon came in. At a certain point, three years of my life, I couldn't understand why I was behaving like that. Even Papa Roca said I didn't like it. Because I became like a, a, a hypersexual, pervert spirit that was overflowing out of me. Every time I wear those things. I would sit like this. And let me tell you, those trainers, that's what your body starts becoming like the, the trainer you're wearing. Your body starts becoming exactly. I'm telling you the truth. I would sit in the mirror like this. I would be in the mirror like this from nowhere. Me. Like that. Checking this gap. At a certain point, I wanted gap here. Because they said that when you have gap, <laughs> my God, have mercy on us. So. <laughs> when I meet Jesus, I understood why my whole life I was bullied and I never fit in into anything. The anointing and the calling upon my life. The God who saved me my whole life could not allow it, even bleaching. He stopped it. Tattoos, he stopped it. I begin, I pay for a tattoo. I start to make the tattoo. I told the tattoo, take the money. Tattoo artist, take the money. I'm out. I never finished it. It is still on my feet, left tower. Piercings. I was pierced, my sisters, from here to there. One time, in fact, the, the piercings brought me trouble because I, I got them when I was young because every girl in my high school was getting pierced, not knowing that the women that pierce all their ears is called the Jezebel spirit, demon sexual immorality. It's like it's like sex worn on you everywhere. So they can take any hole actually in the realm of the spirit. You can save nyash, or ears, a, a, a mouth, whatever. It's like a perverted thing. My sisters, I was pierced that my brother, at first I thought my brother was jealous. My mother was not happy when I came home and all oh my, my whole ears were pierced. 
My brother John squeezed me. He squeezed me so hard. The reason why he squeezed me so hard is because God punished me. One of the ear thing I pierced, the nail, the metal went inside the skin. So it started to rotten. I still have it. It's still here. There's still a bubble here. There's still a bubble inside. If you see from the back, you see that? This bubble. Yes, that's why my brother had to collect it. Almost died at the hospital for nothing. So everything I tried to do as a girl, to be a girl girl, it never fit. I went to heels, mean skate, you know those dresses. Me, I have a very good shape. The one that the Lord gave me, I'm telling you. I have a very good shape. A lot of people would like to have my shape. Jesus blessed me with a wonderful shape. Flat nyash, legs like footballer, uh, 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 Chinese on the end. Uh, um, they go, but they come and they steady and it's okay. You understand? <laughs> I don't get too tall. I don't get too fat. I'm like a boy, boy body. You understand? I climb three too much. So my bone need be solid. It's like how all people bone. Solid. Steady, my solid. You hey, praise the Lord. My sisters, I started short dresses. Short dresses was another experience. The Lord did not like it for me. Oh. I remember one experience. This was not even when I met Jesus. This is how Jesus ruined appetite for everything for me. So even in the world, I didn't get to enjoy these things. Like some of you have enjoyed. <laughs> these colored friends, Macarena and her rich people friends. I remember the ambassador of U A USA. Her daughter, they called her Tyra. Now these girls, they like village girl. They said, let's go party. Rich people, children, and I just go follow where you will die for nothing other. See how the devil make me one die. Ha! <laughs> Jesus, I thank you for saving my life. Now, so they carry us to a house. Her mama, the ambassador was saying bye bye, going to enjoy. The daughter is getting ready with men, and you know, rich people allow their children to have sex like it's, uh, it's, it's bubble gum. It's, it's somehow, I don't know. Money, they make people become colossus that rubbish become normal in their eye. That's the devil. My sisters, that's how these girls dressed me up. I'll never forget. And we went at arcades. Code for Ziktak is behind you. Peter for Ziktak. I went at arcades with these girls in the night. They put me in heel. That heel was all of short size. You know those prostitutes who they entertain uh, white people? Sevana Wikute. Wembo Wendoshi. Satana Nikankaura. Mwebantu Akwalesa. They put me in you like that. They dress me in long wig. They put me in one short dress. I'll never forget. Dress like that and it had a small belt here. And my body sat fine in there. When you start to work at to work at arcades, we come out of these cars. We are walking with my friends. Pa, 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 pa. I see everybody looking, looking, looking. It's the way one man look at me. And he knew me. And entering, you know, arcades, uh, Rhapsodies. Is it Rhapsodies? Nick, the uh, uh, Irishman, my old boss, his wife owns Rhapsodies. He, me, owns O'Hagans. I know that because they're husband and wife. I remember I went to my old boss wife place. You know where white people are. That's where these girls wanted to take me. I didn't understand rich people's children acting like prostitutes, still going to where rich people are. I guess rich, they play with rich. But I remember that was prostitution. But prostitution, I'm telling you these things, it never work on me. Let me tell you the things. The Lord. <laughs> My sisters, now so we enter. Somebody from Kaunda Square who knew me, who knew my papa, he <laughs> saw me. I'm walking. Kaka. He said something. He, he asked me, does John know that you are doing this? John is my eldest brother. John, don't play. If you found me in the wrong place, he would carry me before I explain. He would throw me first on the wall. I will get up and explain after I get up. My sisters, let me be in the in the moment of this scenario. When he saw me, he laughed first. He said, ha <laughs> And you know, in the in the neighborhood, we speak to each other. My wanga. Mfana wanga. Muntuanga, blue, like it's a term that we use to people we know, familiar, not familiar, territories we are comfortable in. Hmm? Kojo, mutual, with family too. I remember when that man saw me, he said, Majon Azila, 
Does John know this? Because my brother would never allow none of his sister to be a prostitute. If you were in the club, all my brothers will come. That's why prostitution never worked in my family. My brothers ruined our market. Praise the Lord. God bless our brothers who was, who was cock blocking us for the... God, I thank you. I used to not like John for a while. But Lord, since I understood it, thank you. My sisters, when he told me that, my heart left my body. And he laughed at me. And he said, come here, my young sister. I said, since you're a very beautiful young girl, you don't need to do all of this. You look like a prostitute. And when you enter in there, all men are going to think you're a prostitute. And there are white men in there. My sisters, when I entered Rhapsodies, you know where I went first? I went to the toilet. The first thing I did was begin to remove the makeup that Macarena and this ambassador daughter they put on me. Kia, 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 kia. After I finished that, now I take the shoes, now I give the owner of the shoes. I said, thank you for borrowing me shoes. Thank you. This is how they introduce prostitution to other people. Me, God has put me in places and took me out real quick. If I stayed there too long, they would not be apostles. They would not be those three children. It is really the grace of the Lord. That's how I gave her back the shoes. I put on my flat shoes. You know, the, the type of shoes I had. You know what Shaupawino is? Those African uh, plastic shoes. Malawans and Zimbabweans. You must know them as South Africans because we are still wearing it. They come in design. They come in different color. They come with flower. I had all of them because I could afford them. That was the most affordable shoe I could afford at that point. But the rich children, they just loved me. I don't know why. They loved me. They wanted to take me with them. And they didn't mind to pay for me, dress me, clothe me, do everything. I thought it was love. Ah! Prostitution was maliposa. Thank you, my wanga. They wanted to send me to hell. That's how I gave them back their shoes. I put my shoes on and I told my friend I want to go home. And it was in the middle of the night. She told me you cannot go home. I went outside and it did not take time when I went outside. I looked there. I said, God. And these are the moments every time I got in trouble. It was the only time I really spoke to God. And these are the words that I would say. If I'm drunk, Francine, if I'm drunk, or I mess up, or I fall in the mouth of the devil, it's when I remove these words. I remove these words a thousand times, a million times in my life. I have to confess this. I told the Lord, I said, God, if you take me home, nobody does anything to me. I don't want to be attached in any way. If you take me home, I will not do this again. Time did not pass. I see what we used to call Moamba. He's a taxi driver from Kaunda Square. He had a client, and he knew me like his young sister, and I used to go and call his girlfriend Katongo for him, so he treated me like his own blood sister. I said, He was very surprised. He was laughing at me. Ah, ah, ah. And you know, men, they laugh because also they're not used to seeing this skin naked. He laughed at me, but he gave me a lift and dropped me home. When I went home, I told myself, I said, I'm not going back to those friends again. I go leave it. That's how I stopped. My brothers and sisters, there comes another trouble. Rich people's children, friend, they go carry me. They are dating a man at the University of Zambia, a rich man, and he has a friend. And his friend wants to have sex with me. No, in that bedroom, I sat with that man. I begin to cry. I said, Why you act like you're doing this? He said, You have a father, I said, You have been working in the hospital. I don't even know that if you're sick, I'll call me. I want to go home. I will pay you this. And I said, I come here, I'm not a prostitute. I want to go home. I'm a virgin. In fact, I'm on my period. The man told me, then on period, you use condom. I said, I want to go home. Francine, I cried. I cried so much that I don't know how Jesus used to save me. And I think it is for this here. That's why I should not waste any time or anything in my life anymore. That's why when he got me and made me understand, I've never twitched or snitched again. When I cried for that man, that man felt very, very bad. And the fact that I was calling him uncle, he ended up loving me like his niece. Let me tell you, that man ended up being a blessing. Because there was time I needed even help. That man gave me money, he helped me, and he never touched me. And he told me, stay away from those, your friends, because as doctors, we exchange them. And when one is dumped, we, we tell each other, I'm done with her, the other one goes. So they think they have marked it. 
they would go in the university of a, a, a teaching hospital, UTH. We would sit in the offices there. You see them coming out with scrubs and things with blood. They buy us drinks, sausage and chips, giving money to these girls. And these girls have got fathers who pay everything for them. But do you know what those girls, why they were doing that? And God made me realize and understand the wigs, the makeup. It could not let them see the type of life they had. They were so blessed. But yet these girls wanted to still hustle. It was all because of the things they brought in their lives. And I know this because every time I tried to bleach, the time I tried to make up, the time I was doing weeds, the spirit of prostitution came in. But do you know what is funny? I will tell you something that is a confession. One time I was at a... Um, what is this? Those of you who are Zambians, Francine. The shop at ShopRite. ShopRite Arcades. You know at ShopRite Arcades? This bar here. What is the bar outside at ShopRite Arcades? Huh? My sisters. What is that shop at Arcades? Please, somebody tell me. It is a bar where a lot of white men hang. Hmm? A lot of you are Zambians, you know the bar I'm talking about. It's been 15 years almost since I was in Zambia. I don't remember the name. It was not Rhapsodies. It is, it is a bar. It was owned by, is it by a... No, no, the one that is owned by a... Spiway is the other one, which is now Chicago's, right? I think he was also the owner of Chicago's. No, not Masaka. Mami, Parkades. Parkades, a, 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 a shop, a, a, a spa. When you are going to spa, where spa is, when you come out, there is a, a club restaurant outside here, just opposite BP, opposite the BP feeding station. That I remember very well. There was a BP feeding station, Parkades, and cool. My sisters, prostitution never worked. We went to that club. We were partying. After we partied that club, we went to 101. 101 is the one which is in the hook there. You understand? No, in Lusaka. In Lusaka, mami. In Lusaka, spa, spa Lusaka, arcades. Pakona, there's a club there. A restaurant such club. I think in Yaspi when I have. My brothers and sisters, that's how we went to that club. We were drinking. We met a white man there. This is where I knew that prostitution was never for me. I'm telling you the truth. Because I had so many incidents that friends took me somewhere. And I found myself with a man in a room. And the, the time for the sex came. And there's something in me like a child. I cried. And I, can, I don't want to act fake or pretend. But I didn't want to have sex with anybody without me wanting. And also what I didn't want was to have sex with a man. And then a man gives me money. I didn't want that. I didn't want that. Because I didn't see it in my family. It was not even allowed. We were allowed to fall, make mistakes, but prostitution was not allowed in my family. Nobody retaliated and became a prostitute. No. Selling your body for sex? No. My father would have never allowed it. He did the deeds for us in his childhood if he made mistakes. He got down with prostitutes. We were not going to be prostitutes. God forbid. My sisters, that's how I went there. We were with me and my friend, Mag. We were drinking, and we met a white man. He was a, a British guy, very rich guy. And he ended up liking me. Let me tell you, this British guy liked me so much that he said, you know what, let's go to 101. We went to 101, we had drinks, we were drinking there. He was all lovey-dovey, and me, I'm not the type that you're in the club with me, and you think you can be kissing me that rubbish. Me, I'm a village woman. In fact, I like, I kiss only feel sweet with a, a man that I love, because I'm villagic, I don't know how to kiss. The kiss only come out right. If we are also intertwined, like the way I met Papa Roca I didn't have to, with a kiss, it was just, you understand me? Sister Suzette Louis, hi, sissy. So my sisters, that's how we got out of the first club, went to 101. When we finished at 101, this man invited us to his house. And when we reached at his house, he was very lovey-dovey. We got down on the same bed together and we fell asleep with no sex. 
and we woke up the next morning. And I'm telling you, when we woke up, he, he started to make a trick. He played a trick with me and my friend, Mark. He wanted to see if we are really, we are really prostitutes. He said he lost $1,000 in his house. I took my BlackBerry phone, I took my camera, I took my ATM and I said, to make up for whatever, because you will not make me look like a prostitute. Take all my things, I've not stolen anything. And I I started to cry like a child, especially when you accuse me, it was the only thing that I could do, cry. That's why I cry a lot even now. And because also growing up as a child, mistaken identity and everything, people, the neighborhood saying things about you. So I was very... I used to cry a lot and I would sing it because God gave me this gift and I would make songs at the mountain, the side of the road by myself. I'm telling God, why do people not like me? Why do they always think I'm a bad child? Why do you think, do they think when I play with guys, they're having sex and taking advantage of me? Like, like at a child, I was asking those things. So when this guy saw that, I started to cry. He stopped playing that rubbish. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just lying. I wanted to see because most of the times when I bring girls here, he said that I wake up in the morning, I found that they are gone, this and that. I said, me, I don't steal and I don't take anything. And if you want to take my things, take them. That's how we apologized. But because of the way he treated us, he even scared us. He said he would call the police. I started to cry and beg like a dog. I said, I beg you, search us. Take everything if you want to take. My brothers and sisters, he called the taxi driver for us. The taxi driver took us home and that man wanted to take me for another date. When the taxi driver dropped us, I said, I do not want to play with white men who are like that. God forbid. Imagine if that scenario would have gone left. And I believe that that man, it was God who stopped him. I could have been gone to jail that day. So every situation in my life, I found myself, Sister Sharon, finding out that God was saving me, preserving me. I did not even know that I was doing something wrong. And that's why this thing of thinking I was a boy. I only, I went to start having, I started, I, I, I had my sexual experience with women. Because the society around me, I had to come out of all of you people, this world that I know and find Jesus. And when I found Jesus, that's why I'm very aggressive to anybody who wants to come in it who is not being sent by God. I am very aggressive by anybody who wants to come and break this. I have been through a lot. The things you are doing, the makeup, God is angry because makeup has sent people to early grave. Fake hair sent people to prostitution because I realized not all of you can afford that and you can laugh emojis hundred million times. But some people have to lay down on their back to get that Brazilian hair. Because of keeping up with skin and all of that, people went in the wrong places. So some of us, we are enablers of others to go to hell. Our own time will come. Aka to Kandales, I will butcher us. Wait, judgment is coming. You cannot run away from judgment, my brothers and sisters. I'm gonna iron more the whole night. Let me go to the kitchen while it's there. Okay, boys, boys, boys. Hey, I'm gonna start making the, the kid filet because the food is ready already so that you can eat. I'll finish ironing up later on tonight, my sisters. It was so sad, and I realized, oh, my friends, I thought I was not woman enough, Francine, because I thought I did makeup, fake hair, even when I had money, I had more money than my friends that were dressing up. I just couldn't find it. And no matter what pressure the world gave me, this God is great. He said, I have called you an apostle before you were even formed in your mother's womb. He preserved me. Do you know how many life experiences I've been in? Because of friends that were into vanity. Most of my girlfriends, they needed to sleep with married men. They went to the UTH to do all of that. To finance their makeup and their hairs. And there are some of you married women right now in this church. You have boyfriends and you are sleeping with people on the side. Because you want to look fine. Uh -uh, that's why some of you brothers... Now you people be goats on your own. Oh, no, this woman you are sleeping with, she's doing what she needs to do to take care of herself. My sisters, I'm a woman like you. These things of good life and leisure that you want, they take you to the places that you're not supposed to be. Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Wait, 
sisters, let me just make sure that I can lift these things up that he dropped so that we can go to the kitchen. I can continue to I can make them food and go to sleep soon. All the girls that are in university, it makes you want to live alone. You know why a blesser came up? A blesser does not bless women with any help apart from one thing. A blesser and people who gift women with cars, all of this, does not finance you to establish you. No. It's for you. You are selling your body to make yourself look good outside here. So when I realize that my friends have to lay down, you open your legs wide like that. Just to have a car, this and that. And it's not just the girls that I played with. I know celebrities in the Zambian industry that go to the copper belt, sleep with men, and men send them cars. I've been there in those sex appointments. I was sitting in the some lodge waiting for you. I dare you to come out and say that I'm lying. Then I'll say your names. So that I can then tell the wife of that man in the copper belt that I was there when you were playing fake. In the evening, we are sitting together with his wife. In the night, the husband is following us at the lodge. And you are an artist. They are being Ding, ding, ding. Other women, you celebrities who are admiring cars, where people are getting these things is what God has hated the most. And because it has misled the poor, you think God wants makeup on the earth. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me get up. Let's go to the kitchen. You know, my house is a mess. I told you people already. Papa Rokofe is doing everything for me, so do not mind how my house looks like. The devil lied to us. We are a gullible generation, a distorted generation, a foolish generation, a weak generation, and he loves it. The Lord kept that from me, and that's the reason why being natural, the way he fearfully and wonderfully made me, he saved me so that I could become a wife. He saved me. He saved my mileage of my vagina so that my vagina shall not be loose before my husband marry me. No, as much as I have lived, even up to now I'm 40, my total still be fine. He functioning well, well. That's why God is great. He preserved me at the right time. Even conceiving children was not hard. Because also, I have missed a lot of things at my age. Some of you were the same age, 40, 40. But there are a lot of things I've missed that you have participated in because God saved me. And the Lord, I'm, at, at first, I never understood. I thought I don't belong. I don't fit in. Something is wrong with me. How can a woman not be just a woman like every other woman? Hey, Mbanuga. Mbanuga, eh? Mbanuga. It's the Lord who was preserving my life. Wait a Kai out, I'll, I'll step on you. Let me start preparing the food so that we can eat. Sorry, sisters. Let me change also network frequency because that way we will not have any problems because usually... Don't worry, it's restoring. Yes. Let me change my internet connection also from the other side because... Most of the times, my internet in the kitchen, I don't know why Vodafone is doing us like that. It a play dumb dumb. So let me connect to my, to my direct mobile internet. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. So I realized something. And I was living with girls when I moved out of my father's house. I find out all this while, most of my friends, they didn't have work. Their work was sleeping with older men to pay rent for them to do this for that. Me, my whole life, I've always had a job. I worked as a maid for celebrities. The looks of Louis and Ohangal. I worked also to sell whatever I could sell. I worked also as a waitress at O'Hagan's. I worked at, as a waitress at a, 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 a arcade opposite that feeding station, that car next restaurant behind. I've always had a job, and my biggest job was this talent he gave me. I was always singing in a band. I was always, I was always good at my, my, my craft, my goodness that God gave me. My gift, my talent that God gave me. I used that. But the people around me, I realized all my young friends, they didn't have jobs. Afternoon, men come in the house. 
I want to do my hair. The married man is paying for her hair and the rental house. If he dies today, she have nothing. I thought there was something wrong with me. I really thought there was something wrong with me that even when I met a man, even when he had money, that's why I tell people Papa Roca Fera is really the first white man that made my heart and my soul run because I've been in the presence of rich men that were shaking around me. Rich men that even now, I'm telling you, I was, Sister Sharon, when was that day I was telling you about the, when I was talking on the video here on live? I said I had to cut one of my friends from Ireland because that one, I knew that he was always in love with me. He would move from Ireland, come to Zambia, come and check me out. That even now when I was married here, he would, every time he comes to Amsterdam, he's always asking, can I see you? And we would sit, have a drink together. But since I married Papa Rukafe, I said I do not want. So rich man was never my calling. And I do not want a rich man. Because every man can be rich. Even Papa Rukafera can be rich. That's something the easiest. It's about the heart. And the soul of the man. The character. The morals. That attracts me to a man. The rest, I don't care. My brothers and sisters, I realized all these girlfriends were laying down to make money. And I didn't, I thought that it was only just girls in university college. People with jobs on the side still lying down to make money. Mm? Mm. Who else? Mm. Eh, 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 eh. <laughs> celebrities, female celebrities in the industry. Most of the people you see, their influence takes them to bed of ministers and people that you do not even think of. And I realize that every woman is different. But what I learned about us women, most of us, we do not have standard. We shall lay down for anything. The reason why prostitution never came in my life. Because that same part where they called me blacky, nigger, ugly, that low self-esteem that built in me, it was a blessing in the sight of the Lord to me. Because it made me not want to feel comfortable to do certain things. And I thank God for that, my sisters. Because imagine me. With this skin tone and this hair as a prostitute. Where? And that's what I realize is happening in my generation. They think it's cute. They think it's fun. They think it's just, oh, no. Young women, they whole around the whole entire world. They are the same. And you think it's only black women. No, this demon has even entered white women. White women, their form of prostitution is sugar daddy. That's another way of prostitution, sugar daddy. My sisters, they all of this. These girls, they invited spirits. So I realized when I meet God, he told me, all of your friends you saw doing those nyaka nyaka things. You know why? The makeup, the hair. Everything that you guys put on, it takes away the fear of God. It takes away the existence of you as a human being. It tentes your souls. It becomes bored enough. It breaks the fear of God in you. That you feel comfortable to start lying down to sleep with men. It's not you. Inside the makeup. Inside the wig. Inside is something that is moving you. That's why everything you do looks simple. And that's why all this world, you sleep with married men. You don't find it bad. The things around you, they steal your conscience. When you wake up sober in the morning, you're looking at the mirror natural. The demon is there. Angry. Take your makeup. Take up. The moment you put your makeup on, some of you, you even forgot what you were supposed to do and what you were going through. What did you do, sister? You allowed the makeup to steal you. Yes. Makeup is not just a tool for the face. As a woman who has not used it so much like other women in this life, God showed me the truth. Makeup is the pit door opening of hell. Through makeup, other spirits are coming in. They are spirits whether you believe it or not. And don't take it from me. 
ask the Holy Spirit. And some of you, you've already been convicted by God. It is the fact that you do not just want to leave it. But my sister, don't worry, God don't force. He said freely, you have to accept him. He don't force nobody. If you do not want, you do not want. He will not force you. And he cannot use what he has to force. It has to be conviction. So for me, every question that I had as a little young girl, my best friend Manasse will tell you. I thought you know. And the African society, when you start getting breast, you don't know how to make up, you don't know how to do all of this, they say you're not woman enough. Me, I missed it. A lot of people think I'm younger than I am. I'm not a child though. My skin has been preserved because it does not know makeup so much. No. Always my whole life, wherever I went. The only time that I put fake things on is because of this society we have created. Even the village girl in the village, she's watching TikTok right now. She doesn't have school fees or health insurance for her children. But even them, you see Satan has given them the cheapest form of makeup, the one that brings cancer. And when the Lord opened things for me, he said, what is the, common, the most common denominator between Africa and the Western world? What is making now Africa become westernized? Why are Africans developing diseases and sicknesses that were only found in white genes? <laughs> Ask yourself that. Why? Why? Because Africa is now wasting. Yes. That hair that you put. <laughs> One time I put a wig on. That wig almost killed me. I didn't understand what was wrong with the wig. But when I took the wig, I tore it apart. I started to see the hair that they put on our wigs, the hair that you have in your wigs, my sisters, it doesn't stop growing. It doesn't stop growing. The hair of somebody else can break through the wig cup and grow on your head. It's not every follicle of that end of the week they remove. How many people are in your head? I used to have demons that used to speak in my head. It was almost like I was mad, my brothers and sisters. Satan wanted to make me mad. The wrong things that I touched, voices started speaking. Sometimes I would have thoughts, my brothers and sisters, like premonitions that didn't make sense. You know where you are alone in your mind and you're thinking, am I a normal human being for even thinking like that? Eh? But God showed me. And the moment he showed me the truth, I packed everything and I've never looked back. This is how I came out of my mother's womb. Whatever God wanted for me to have, he would have added it in the womb. Because the body of a woman is complete from the moment she's formed in the womb. These things you put hair, makeup, it's not God. And it's not modest. And it's a way to deceive all of you because the people that were supposed to know wrong and right, the women of the Lord, you are all wearing makeup. When I see your profile pictures, you are beat like Jezebel spirits. How can you not know what the devil is doing to you? And because it's looked as as simple as it's just makeup, what can makeup do? If God would open your eyes like he opened mine, see what those makeup do in the night. You would be surprised that this eyeshadow, they walk. This powder, they become water and blood. Uh -huh. And it's on your skin. 
And that's why the pastor wife, she can come up with a Simon to tell her church members, put a wig on. I can never tell anybody to put a wig on. I will never bless anybody with a wig in my life. I will never give anybody makeup in my life. And I will never promote or bless anybody who does makeup. If I give somebody, like I saw somebody yesterday, she says she's a makeup artist from Nigeria. I want to bless her with something for business, but I'm going to specify this seed cannot be attached to the world of makeup you live in. Separate it, because it comes from Jesus. You cannot mix it with cockroaches. Mm -hmm. No, my sisters. Move, 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 move. Therefore, it's a lie. The reason why Satan fights me online here more than any other church, any other woman preaching the gospel is because I did something that a lot of women will not do. Yes, I got out of his fiction of makeup and faking. Excuse me, I know these things. It's not like I'm a fool. I've used them in my life before. I'm going to be a village woman, but don't make me an illiterate. Just makes me a natural anointed. Hello? And that pisses him off. And every day I don't use makeup. Satan is angry. Because it's another gate that I have not opened. Yes. And let me tell you how Satan looks at us, this generation. He laughs at you. He says you worship a God who says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. But you dare enter his house with all of that. And that's why we cannot see anything in this generation. And that's why I'm telling you, some of you, when people are crying online here, also the Lord told me, make up and fake hair. It makes people stone cold. Instead of feeling emotion of other human beings, you can't feel it. You become like a demon that's ruthless. You just bite and like a snake. You, you, you just, you eat, devour. The Lord told me this. And I can tell you about the experience. I meet women. I told them, the Lord said, take that wig off. When this woman was wearing the wig, she was a savage modupe. She was, I said, take that wig off in Jesus' name. She took the wig off. It was like two different people. And the worst wig to have is the wig that comes from the Asian villages, from the Indian villages, where little children live in poverty and people go to them and ask them to cut that hair specifically for three hundred dollars so they pay that child to cut all the glory that god has put on it for three hundred dollars and they bring it to black women and we black women are buying that why do you think black people we are so cursed so much in the sight of god there's one thing that we we need to remain God will show the white people means for something. If they say white people are alien, these people, they look like aliens, the same way they came. If they say black people, we are monkey, us, we are not looking like monkey anymore. We are looking like a pink monkey. And that's just the truth. And men, you see it. And there are some men the reason why God told me side chicks, some men, they went to a side chick, that the side chick they are dating, she said, I'll stop putting makeup so we can start saving. I want you to buy me a car. The man fell in love with the side chick. He was, you know, <laughs> Father, if they knew, if they knew, they would understand you a lot. If they knew. He is entering in your house. Some girls are born like we used to call them Mama Mary. When you see that girl that was like Virgin Mary, at this point she's rebellious. She's doing all of these things. Back up and with it. Now spirit of destruction. And it works more than you think. <laughs> if it doesn't work, check your bank account. Count how much do you use per month for hair and things. And check. And then ask yourself, do your children have a college fund? No, Satan has blotted me. Yes. That's why African parents can't send their children to school. And some of you, God said, 
He said, you need to wake up before it's late. There are some men who work like dogs just for how the wife to come and put a wig and makeup on Facebook and try to torment other people with the same money that the man is working like a dog to make. I will not do Pabaro Cafe like that. After when I realized, even when I had a job, this man paid all the bills. He didn't touch my money like that. Pabaro Cafe never plays with my account, even right now. We have a joint account for both of us, but he always leaves me to have my own account. I thought to myself, I said, Lord, I will not abuse this man. When you give me a good man that can help me to build the state, this man is not younger, he's older than me in some couple of ages. Which means you have given me time and knowledge and I should be able to look around. It's either I can be the one to go into problems first, or he might not make that money the way he makes it now anymore. What am I going to do? The Lord says, if you do not prepare the foolish veggies, there are some men who are working so hard. Their money is just going to Brazilian hair and makeup. How sad it is. Because the one who runs the home is the woman. Some of you are shameless. Your children don't even have a piece of land. But you go to salon you can hear. That's what makeup and take care of them. Did they make you... You know what he do? He makes you deception of choice. Isn't this exaggerated? Makeup and fake hair has made you black women choose it and not your children. That's why our children are suffering. It's not because God hates African people. Lie, lie. It is what the African woman chose. Jesus can't come and back her up. But if you change, I've seen him. He did back us up like nobody's business. And the Lord told me, I need you to be an example. I need you to do this for me, for the kingdom. Give these things up and I will show you. He said, you just need one woman to awaken a whole generation. God has made me go to Tasha Cobbs in the inbox. I rebuke them, even Mama Sissy. I say, why are we sleeping? My sister is in. My sister is in. Satan is very clever. It's very clear. I am telling you the truth. It's very catastrophic. Okay. If I like, they go punish me. But I know one thing. The truth is being spoken. We need to wake up. And I pray that as I speak this message this whole week in different ways, and I'm going to bring it to scripture. Today I just wanted us to start. And I wanted to tell people, I did not stop wearing makeup and I'm not doing this to convict anybody. Go and seek God about it. I stopped because God stopped me. He's the one who made me throw away my makeup in front of all my sisters. And the Holy Spirit wanted me to know that I want you to see that I'm not playing with you. It has to be done where I see it. Sister Sharon, remember, in front of all my Zoom group members, this God made me collect 5,000 euro pair of, of makeup in perfume in everything you can think of. And I put it in two, three, was it four big bag trashes? Is that For garbage. And I threw them away. And most of you, when you have makeup, because they, you know the one they call spirit of addiction to show. I want people to know that addiction, shopping, is a spirit and a demon too. Those of you who, who shop a lot, just like I was telling you, one pair of shoes, different colors, but five, five different types. Everything, you want to be in fashion, in modern, that spirit is not from God, it's from the devil. It comes with the spirit of vanity, which is the marine spirit, because the marine kingdom, the Jezebel and marine kingdom, they have made as one. So they, they do everything for appearance, for delusion and deception. So some of you, because of makeup, you can't help yourself. And that's why when we meet people, we say, but this woman, just like right now, I can say some of you are really, really useless or dumb. It's an example. How can you buy Brazilian hair, but your children do not even have a piece of land? It makes you forget. So it is an addiction. Only others can see it. You can't see it yourself. And a lot of women are in bondage. Yes. That's why when you see women, let me tell you something, how it starts. 
When you see the girls that go for plastic surgery to perfect their niche, to do this and that, don't laugh at them. It's not their choice. Pray for them. The makeup they started with, it became, it's the levels. There are some, they are not lucky. When they start using makeup, it takes them to another level. So she was human. She now wants to start modifying herself. It's all makeup, my sister. It's all makeup. And if you want to see that the demons speak inside you, some makeup has gotten out from their body, the demons speaking to them. That's why they go for plastic surgery. Sister Sharon, you know what I'm talking about? You have it in Europe and we have it here in UK and Sister Carrie. You all know what I'm talking about. They go to people who modify their ears by cutting your ears like a wolf or a cat. She says she feels like a dog. Mia, it's the makeup. It's in levels. When you see women go for plastic surgery to modify their bodies, it all started, remember what I was talking about? Waist trainer, shape wear. The demons start to convince you, you don't have to wear this shape wear. You can actually go and do liposuction. They are dying on the table. Satan is not our friend, black woman, wake up. <laughs> now he's just screaming for you people to wake up and see God. Don't believe me. See God. Please see God. See God, don't believe me. So when God made me understand these things, I can't. What I know is too deep for me to ever go back. I can't, my brothers and sisters. There is nothing that would make me go back to fake here. No, 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 no. Never. Makeup, never. One time my husband, when I was, uh, I finished throwing all my makeup, he said, maybe you should just have a small makeup bag, but you should buy maybe a powder lipstick. I said, the Lord said he doesn't want not even a lip balm. He don't want. He don't want. Some people remove ribs to a thin waist. What do you think? And that's why the Kim Kardashians and the Beyonce's, including Beyonce, you think Beyonce born like that? Like too many work has been done there. People will never say it. I say it here. If they want to come for me, be I, they are not coming for me. Now Jesus will fight you, idiots. I'm telling you the truth. It moves in step, small by small, small by small, small by small. If God wanted anything on you, he would have done it. And you know why women, we are stubborn more than men? Because even right now in the church, people are wearing makeup. That's why I know that when God convicts you, you will remove it. That's why I taught Sister Sharon. When I used to preach, Sister Sharon saw me do all of this. She didn't stop straight away. But after a while, I know that the Holy Spirit visited Idris. They they call an holy jail. I don't see Idris with makeup. And I thought Sister Sharon, I said, Sister Sharon, since you stop putting makeup and you stop abusing your hair, you look times four, five years younger than the way the makeup make you look like. Sharon is a beautiful woman. And her skin, come on now. Makeup is just going to give Sharon acne for what? For nothing. I never make my sisters feel bad. Even you, those of you who are watching me right now, even if I meet Sissy Wine today, if the Lord has not told me to speak to her about it, I will not. Because God is a personal relationship with Jesus. It relationship with Christ. Receive him, accept him, obey him, follow his commandments and precepts. We cannot convict one another. But when you see us out here on the online, don't ever call me ugly. Because you do not know what you are talking about. The demon in you better keep quiet. Because actually you vex the kingdom of heaven. Because the children of the Lord have all been devoured by evil spirits because of this. So that's the reason why I don't do makeup. That's the reason why I don't take part in it. That's the reason why I don't wear rubbish anymore. Even the clothes that I have, I threw away everything that does not represent God. The Holy Spirit went through my closet with me. And everything he wants me to keep, he makes me keep. But every time I go in the presence of God, he always reminds me, never ever be such or ever clean up your outer appearance. Don't render me your outer garment. Render me your inner garment because the outer garment is nothing. It doesn't speak much. The inner garment is great. And it will reflect the outside. 
That's why. Let her wake up. Let her wake up. Some of you, your men, are sleeping with fellow men because the wig that you bought, it was from a gay man. So that spirit, because that gay man lost his hair and fair, he said, whoever is going to take my hair, they will never have peace. How come we found some men, black men, white men, Chinese men, who have never had sex with fellow men? All of a sudden, they want to have sex with other people. With fellow men. So you mean it's just a person who woke up all of a sudden from nowhere, they want to mark another man? My sister stinky. Stinky. Since I stopped wearing makeup, I don't get spiritual attacks. I sleep very well. I don't get no rubbish like that, I'm telling you, my sisters. I don't get demons. I don't get anything in the night. I sleep since I stopped wearing makeup and wigs, and since they left my house, the peace I have, my sisters. Yeah, and the amount of money that I have saved. Hey, Lord, if I knew I would have started already when I was a young girl. I wanted to look like a drago out here, Lord. For who? For who to, to acknowledge me that I'm a dragonian? Blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. So, so I stopped. And I'm never going back. It is not temporary. And it's not to put makeup every once in a while. Never. Even when I went to do my cover for my album that is supposed to come out, they were surprised. They thought, I showed up like, Sister John, you know me, I showed up like that. Even when I went to my brother Ibe, I showed up like that. My sisters, let me come close, get used to, let me first put my screen so you can get used to this thing. And they come, one second, it's like six. Play. <laughs> And I want to make sure that my caca bone can show too. <laughs> Get used to this face. I will save Jesus like this with Vaseline. Even the day that I die, nobody should ever pamper me with makeup. Otherwise, I will come back from the graveyard and come and kill your mother house in Jesus' name. No lie, oh. <laughs> No, 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 no. Don't try that thing. They call it modest. They call it makeup. -y. They call it trying to prepare yourself. Prepare yourself for what? Only Jezebel did that. The only woman throughout all creation and in the Bible who needed that is Jezebel. Hmm? I beg to differ. I follow you. I love your word, but I have been wearing makeup and wigs. It is the outer appearance. It has nothing to do with who people are in the inside. That means that means we be naked. You, I'm not telling you to differ with me. I am not telling you what I think. I am telling you what the Lord told me. And just because that makeup spirit that is speaking in you right now don't want to let go of makeup, sister, P may, P may. We are not here to agree with you. You are not God. You are not God. And that's why I'm saying in this sermon, how many times have I said, it's just makeup. What can makeup do? God, if he looks at the inside, how can he have a problem with me just putting makeup? My sister, be me. There is a way that she met right to mouth. But his ending is destruction and death. You are speaking out of destruction. I did not ask you to, to, to agree with me. That's why I said, go and pray to the Lord. A lot of women have been convicted. But because of women like you, you see how you said it, the inside, you are actually naked. And when I see your mouth, my sister, that whole lipstick, like that red, with Jesus, with Jesus, sister P. May. And those of you who are shocked, don't start nothing. This is supposed to be review direct. Don't start. <laughs> don't start. If you are looking like a demon on your profile picture, shut up. Shut up. Shut up in Jesus' name, I beg you. In the name of the 
Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if you are looking like a Jezebel spirit there, and your profile picture is having a demon of prostitute, keep quiet. Keep quiet. The marine kingdom can't talk to the kingdom of God. I will present the creation of God. Look at yourself very well. You are not natural. It's called makeup, Sister P. May. Makeup is to make it up. God never made up anything. He created. You get the difference, my sis? I call it wisdom. He created. He's not a God of makeup. He's a God of authority and all creation. And I do not want you to agree with me. Because it's not me who buys makeup for you. But I also know something about somebody like you. You sure don't have a piece of land or a house. I guess the demon is speaking. The makeup that you have should be your leisure for yourself because it brings you something. But not for the Lord. And that's why I said, don't agree with me. But that's why I keep telling you people, before you get petty and angry, let me come close. I said, for me to be convicted to stand in here, it took the Lord to do a lot of things. Greater is the one in me. You out here cannot tell me nothing. You are naked. And you are not very connected with God. Because makeup is connected to Jezebel mixed with the marine spirit. They work together now. You people have become succubus and sorcerers for the pit of hell. You seduce men. And that's why you cannot come out natural. Because if you love the way God created you, why did you waste time to make up? Let the Lord go and convict you. But don't come and argue with me. I did not call you name. I call you the Jezebel spirit in you. Am I lying? That lipstick you have in the marine kingdom, and they see, they, they look like the nyash of the devil. It will be red completely everywhere. Sister P. Me. It's not fight, though. It's rebuke. And Apostle Adam, especially if you come with retaliation, because all this while, if you join late, Forgive you, eh? But if you joined all this world, you knew what I was talking about. I'm not here for you women who are going to cry. <laughs> I'm here to preach the undiluted truth. And if it hurts you, I don't give a damn in the name of Jesus Christ. But don't manipulate me and try to threaten me. Who you be? Satan, you need to have a... You need to have... Full take man in the name of Jesus Christ. You saw the devil, they try rubbish. Excuse me. Now I saw you when the children of the Lord not to repent. Every time Jesus sending repentance. Now the devil, they cry wolf. Satan, don't cry wolf. Don't cry wolf. Don't cry wolf. Don't cry wolf. Conviction is the... That's why I said God does not force anybody. Sister P. May. God does not force you. You have to choose who you love more. Make up for Jesus. What can you live with? And what can you not live with? It's a simple thing. And God never made makeup. Never. Makeup is an idea and an illusion that came from the pit of hell. That's all. Nothing to do with God. Because even the women who have alopecia and have got skin problems, God fearfully, wonderfully made them. He never thought anything about it. Who are you to actually modify yourself when you never even created yourself? Eh? Hey? Eh? I know my sister, Sister Hazel Jackson, when I'm speaking, demons start speaking out. So when a demon is speaking to me, my sisters, it's not my fault that you're not featured in kind. I talk to demons the way I should talk to them. I don't bother. I'm telling you the truth. Of, that's why I tell people, when you come here, if you don't know, keep quiet. But don't let Satan make you feel funny. <laughs> you get showered with the Holy Ghost. Here. It's not pride. It's called authority and knowing who you are in Christ. Too many liars out here. We are not the same. We are not the same. And that's why the children of God shall be distinguished. You will not fight for makeup. Especially for a poor black woman. Look at the one who said they want to wear makeup. This woman, or not, you don't dream to do something for your father, female. Before you live this life, you don't dream that one day you build your father even a small shop. Are you people going to take that makeup to heaven and show the Lord what you did? I wonder. And you know why women wear evil? You see how Satan is alive? See women are still talking about vanity. 
The same makeup you are supporting my sister. It has killed your friends. How do you think your friends are, are ending up on a high tables for surgery? Sister me. Hey, I grew up an orphan. I hope the orphans I feed the poor. So what? So what, sis? God feeds the whole entire creation. So what? So what? Because you help other people, so the Lord has given you permission to wear makeup. If God hates it for me, he can never love it for you. And this is what I tell women. If you are not ready to be convicted, don't fight. So what if you feed the orphans? My sister, you, you are full of yourself. At this moment, I just hope that God will teach you how to be humble. You see how the, the demons in you are manifesting. You see why you need to leave that makeup. We are talking about something else here. But that spirit in you, my sister, is so childish and petty. You see where it went. Hmm? Hello? You, read, you feed the children. You see what I was talking about, manipulation. I speak prophetically and spiritually at all times on this platform. I cannot make you people run in spirit with me. But I can only show you the manifestation of yourself. So my sister, Hey? Oh, sister P. May. My sister. Learn to be humble. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God will give you wisdom. Because my sister, your type, you don't like to break, break, break. But the breakness is nothing. When you look, it's like, what, what did she say? Humble yourself, my sister. And if you feed people, I asked you, have you built land for your father? Now manipulation from the pit of hell for you to answer that you feed the orphans and the need. My sister, feed the orphans and the need. Do everything you want to do that you feel is good. But if you cannot fulfill what God wants you to be, we are wasting time. That's why the Bible says there will be a time that day will come when all of them are going to say, Father, Father. Now me used to save you that Jesus will refuse them. Didn't he say that? My sister, we are not fighting. And I'm not here to convict you. You understand? And if you help other people, if you really do it out of love, you don't have to tell nobody here. In fact, men shouldn't know. God knows. So let's close my sisters for tonight. We are going to continue this topic the whole week. I know we are going to come to a lot of running games. They will fight us because this topic is hating people. Because some people, the reason why they don't want to hear this topic, my brothers and sisters, you should be ready, is because they know that it means that their makeup and fake hair has to be packed. Sister, I did not tell you to pack your makeup and your hair. I did not tell you to go and start hating on other people. I have sisters that are putting makeup and hair. Excuse me. That's why it's not them who are having a great ministry and a calling upon them. It's not them that the Lord preserved and saved. It's me for a purpose and a reason. And I cannot choose. It's the Lord who puts you in, a, in such a, you understand? In such a, a position. My sisters, that's why when you ask me, why is my life getting better and better? Mm. You see, that's why it's you who come to me and cry for prayer requests. You chose makeup. Then lock yourself and bondage yourself for nothing. Sorry, my boy, I'm almost finished. They bondage yourself for nothing. And they are rebellious. You want to talk too much. But now you with spiritual husbands. Now you who don't sleep well. Now you who don't get success and prosperity in your family. And at the same time, now you who are facing millions of spiritual warfare, ask yourself and go and seek God about it. But when it comes to others, and sorry my sisters, don't use manipulation. I will not feel bad. We all have the same opportunity and grace. Receive Jesus. Get all the old garment out and carry the cross. He said carry the cross. He did not say carry makeup. 
So the fact that you even want to fight me over makeup, I call them dumb women because you know why? No salvation, not even on judgment day, it shall stand. And somebody is going to talk about makeup. Sister Mary Morgan carried the witchcraft for my sister. Witches, I send them left. And the left hand is this side, so you can. Witches, I send them left to the pit of hell. I kill sorcerers for a living. It's the power that the Lord has given me. I will never leave a sorcerer to live. And if you're a sorcerer knowing and unknowingly, I don't care. It's your choice. Now you will sit sorcerer. I kill sorcerers for a living. So Sister P. May and Sister Mary Morgan, petty demons, carry each other to your father, Satan. Leave my page in Jesus' name. Leave my page in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not take anybody with you. Everybody is listening to the message. Nobody has been taking their makeup out of their house. Shut up. I silence you prostitutes of Satan right now by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall not speak here because God never gave you no authority to speak to me. This is something you wanted to chunk in. I do not speak to demons. I speak to my sisters. Tell that demon in you. You will die by correction in Jesus' name. I don't go play with you. So let us preach the truth. But don't ever scare me. My sisters, ask yourself tonight. Are you taking makeup for judgment day? One thing that I need you to know, let me say it with shake English. Let these prostitutes from here not kill you. On judgment day, they shall never be the most slayed who make up well in the world. Sister Morgan Mary, you are a liar, you demon from the pit of hell. You fake wannabe infestrating my father's children. I seize you and mute you and nullify you by the power of the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus Christ. No joke with you, Satan. They will never be on judgment day. Best slay to make up in makeup goes to CCY. Lie. There will never be an award on judgment day. Best modest, clean, fresh growing skin. And number one in hygiene in the presence of the Lord on judgment day. Drop that one. Two. Never see how close I'll come to you to show you that God is close to you more than you are. They shall never. Be the most long, flourished Brazilian. The one who put their less front like the way they slay this one. The most less front slay, beautiful Peruvian to the near share category on Judgment Day. Take that one out, my sister, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you with confidence because that's what the Lord told me. They shall never, ever be the most amazing when it comes to eyeshadow eyeliner and and long because the ones that you put on top god already gave you the ones you are born with because you never needed them if you needed them he would have told you to buy he gave you they come from they will never be the most slayed eyebrow queen sister p may and mary morgan let me prove your nonsense damn women who want to come and talk back to an apostle not in my church the church of the lord you are going to enter other people I'm not in the season of women who don't have Jesus to play with me. I will correct you and I will scatter you in the name of Jesus Christ. They shall never be my sisters. For take it out. They shall never be the most sexy, body, sexy, thigh gap, hip, and big bum and yash on judgment day. Take that one out, my sister. The devil is a liar. They gave you all of this. And that's why these witches want to talk here. Because they want you to miss salvation. While lest you were busy making yourself look good. On judgment day, I guarantee you this. I put it on my life in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall never be a category. The most silk and soft hair. Where? That's the kingdom of hell. That's what I'm talking about. Prostitutes do that. Marine kingdom need to do that. Jezebel needed to do that to get men's affection. As with Jesus, even as natural as we are right now, we turn heads and the anointing, it didn't make men and great men quarrel like that. That they don't want to sleep with us, but they want us to save them and they want to be saved. And they ask us, what can a woman like you desire? 
And when the Lord knows who to put in a position, he will not put Morgan or Pime, makeup girls, no. He will put somebody that will move Israel and Jacob in the presence of the Lord. Not these prostitutes that are lying to you. Don't ever talk back on this stage. Because when you gear me up when I'm talking the truth and you want to lie, the Holy Spirit convicted me. No other man can have any other last say. If you are not God, don't talk on this page. And I mean it. Gang gang like that, my brothers and sisters. To Ali Penapali Yesu. Na ala kusan fia mami. Na ala kusan fia mishne akwa Yesu. And that's why the, the devil hates you, my black sister. See how he want to convince you. Whose child is, is with nothing? It's you. Whose life has been taken advantage of? It's you. Whose spiritual life is not going anywhere? You. Who has not seen the presence of the Lord? You. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? If you are with God, don't ever sit on a place where they defend makeup. Remember Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. They are the choice. They chose what was important to them. That they even went in the fire. That the fourth man in the fire came to support them. If you are really of God, Sister P. Made, the reason why I rebuke you, harsh, you rebellious woman, is because, my sister, your sense, in any other line with the Lord, you as the daughter of God, where they are supporting makeup, you keep quiet. You keep quiet, P. Made. Does your God, the God of Abraham, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, need makeup? Does your God use makeup in any way? Not even with the people with alopecia, with skin problems. Does your God ever facilitate that? He will never ever give that as a cure. So why are you here talking about God doesn't care? He cares so much. So much that if you knew that I'm speaking on behalf of the Father. Children are left homeless. Africa is still bleeding. But the people who are hung in Africa, they still have a wig and makeup. Be me, I beg you. I beg you. I'm not angry personally, but if you if you grieve the Holy Spirit in me, that's another thing I can't help it. I'll, I'll whoop you in Jesus' name. Because there are so many people who have lied in the name of God. I've spoke from experience. The places I've been through, the things that God has showed me what makeup has done with everything we've talked about. You wanted to say you only meant this. No, 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 my sister. Your reasoning was not reasoning at all. You should have just humbled yourself. I keep quiet. But you are rebellious. You like to have the last say. That's why I told you here is the Holy Spirit. I don't care what you say. Bring up more and more. It will not change. Because you want to get personal instead of spiritual. It's my bad deal. I came to speak for God. Enough for you. Carry the Lord. But the truth is, there's nothing like that in the Bible that you people are going to meet on judgment day. The way you look so soft on your skin, the way you applied your lipstick and your makeup, the way you wear beat on your face. Sister P. May, it shall never make anything. God will never discuss. That's part of your life that God will never discuss at all. Never. Never. It, where, in, where in Jesus do you have that conversation with the Lord? Best beat on the face. Best waxed, best thigh gap and hip. Jesus don't deal with that. He told me to drop it. So anytime I find people lying, it grieves the Holy Spirit in me. Period. And don't apologize to me to God. Because it's not about me. It's about God. But because I'm convicted by the Holy Spirit, no other out voice can tell me something else. Nobody can tell me something else. No. You believe I'm going to put the conviction that God has put me in three years now? I believe it. No. So my sisters, hello? My sisters, do you hear what I'm trying to say? There is no category in the presence of God. If you knew, 
He told me to stop wasting time on it. Modest. There shall never be any modest in makeup. The only thing that God has told me about appearance is to make sure that I'm covered. I don't tempt my friends in any sexual, seductive or productive, pro provocative way. Even when people came to me and said, comb your hair so you can help other people, the way you prepare yourself, you can encourage others to come to Christ. God said I should not do it. There's nothing I need to do to convince you people to come to Christ. He said if I have to dress up to make sure that I convince you people that, yes, I'm really of God, I'm modest and I'm clean, then it's not really of God. If you can't see God in the way he created me, fear, fear, and wonderfully made then you will never see God. God started taking out. And he took out a lot and he's still taking out. And I will not be ashamed for Jesus. And I will not slow down now. Devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. I will not. The greater is the one in me than what is out here. And I love the way God loves me. I love the way he created me. I love the way he sees me. I love the way he looks at me. I love the way he created me. And that's the reason why I speak for Jesus. Because he said, go out there and tell them the truth. And he told me, don't sugarcoat. And when somebody tries to say any other gospel or tell you something else, shut them up. And because of that, I got the right to insult demons. That's why when you come here, you are not knowing what I'm doing. You just allow yourself to come just like this sister here. Why are you angry, my sister? I will insult you and I'll never feel bad. Because the spirit in you is a messed up, perverted prostitute from the pit of you. And because God saved me from never ever being a prostitute in my life, God forbid, I will transform prostitutes for Jesus. But prostitutes don't talk to me. And the reason why I call them prostitutes, it's demons that don't move in the spirit. They move out of order. Demons will never move in spirit. So why should I speak to a demon? Nice? And my sisters, if you are a human being and you find yourself here, and I rebuke you just like this sister here, don't cry to me that I insulted you. Who told you to open your mouth? What power and spirit was speaking out of you? God or God. Let me make plans for the boys. Period. As simple as that. And Satan, fear and guilt don't live here no more. I don't care about you. What you think of me, what you say of me, what your daughters and your concubines and sancubines say. I don't give a damn. Sister Mary Morgan, why insult us as prostitutes? My sister, Sister Mary Morgan, are you dumb or are you just playing dumb? I guess you are the only one who knows that as. If you and me know each other personally for me to insult you as a prostitute, then let God punish me. But if the demon in you just the move the way it wants to move, my sister, don't get angry at me. Get angry at the spirit inside you. It got you insulted. It will also get you killed and it will also get you in trouble because that spirit is doing things in your body on your behalf. Wake up, you're too old. If it has hurt you about makeup, please. I'm not even in your home. That's why a woman, no wonder the, the snake deceived the woman. I'm not in your home. But the stress you are getting over this topic, you want to fight with me personally. I wonder if you would fight with uh, Pastor Chris or Jerry Eze if he come with a message like this. I know, Sister Mary Morgan, you will never go to Jerry Eze and talk to him like that. You see Jerry Eze, the same way God called Jerry Eze, even me. You see Apostle jo uh, 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 Joshua Suleiman, Joshua Suleiman, the same way he was called, the same way. You see the way he called him Apostle? I'm called the Apostle too. So if you can never fight with them and retaliate with them, Sister Mary Morgan, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to, my sister? Just because you've got breath and breast and toto, you will not enter me. You behave yourself. You came in the church. When you come in church, receive Jesus. And you said Jesus preached peace and love. What am I preaching here? Stupid mumu.
Yes, I told you you are stupid. You wanted my attention. But you will not like what I will give you. So take peace. Take peace, my sister. Women like you, it don't matter what we tell you. Your weak, your deceitful heart. They like to send their friends like this. But Jesus already know you. Please. Sister Pime, you started this now. You cannot tell me not to be angry. You see why Sister Pime when I was rebuking you. My sister Pime, I rebuke you harshly. And I can openly tell everybody here who's been watching. There are certain things, Sister Pime, that you do not start. That's why when we move in spirit, God will tell you what to say and not what to say. There are certain things that bring rubbish and confusion among his people for nothing. Sister Pime, you started this. You and me are fine. We are okay. It's sorted out, isn't it? But do you see Sister P. Morgan? Sister P. Morgan is going to get seen now because you know what Sister P. Morgan wants. She wants me to get out of the topic and the, and, and, and the, the, the subject. She wants me to get out of the spirit and go in the flesh. Sister P. Morgan, you cannot preach the word of God to me because your wisdom is very little and less. For the question and the, the remark that you had brought, you are the last person we're expecting to write, we should follow the example of Jesus Christ. If you follow the example of Jesus Christ, what did Jesus say? Speak when you need to speak. And keep your mouth when you don't need to speak. So Sister P. Morgan, who are you preaching to? That Sister P. May, I know you and me, we are fine. This matter finished a long time ago, but my sister, I'm using this moment. Do you see how you and me can resolve things fast and it's finished? You understand where I'm coming from? Look at Sister P. Mo uh, P. Morgan. She's now, she's hurt, she's crying in her soul now. The fight goes big. And that's why I rebuked you, my sister. If you and me need to talk, you can come in the inbox. I know that you are calm because you and me understand what happened here. And you understand where the rebuke came from. But Sister P. Morgan does not understand. And that's why I tell you, my sister, when we are around one another, let God move amongst us. If we do things out of our own self, you see how we make others lose it. Rebuke is harsh. And that's why teaching women online, if you don't go to start anything, nobody will rebuke you. But you like to talk too much. And that's why Sister a a Morgan, you never talk to Jerry A. The Lord said, don't talk to me like that. You don't like it. I said, stop it. Don't talk to me like that. You wanted trouble, you. And because you feel like we are fellow women, when women stand at the altar like this, especially with how much you are in, you look at us like dogs. You underestimate us. Let me preach the gospel, my sisters. Let those who need to be saved be saved. This is nothing for you if you don't want Jesus. It's always when they rebuke you. And I saw you remember scripture. But Jesus said you preach the gospel calmly. I preached the gospel the whole entire calmly. Didn't you hear it? I'm not calm with demons. And I never will I do. Why? For who? To prove to you people online. I don't need to be polite to you people. I need to be in alliance with God. And every time you bring up the topic, hey, but Jesus preached my sister. Thank God for the grace. You are not Jesus, I am not Jesus, you will never be Jesus. So if an apostle, I don't make you feel bad not to be Jesus. You can't make me feel less or bad. I know that I'm not Jesus. Where were you going with this? You never mind your own business. And God has shamed you. Because P -A -A -A, this other sister you're talking about, P May. P May did not allow the devil to gloat over her. And she knows that tomorrow she's going to come here. Because if this was personal, I would have blocked you. I rebuked you. Because whatever you were saying was not for the moment. Because we're talking to sisters that were convicted. And because you don't love your sisters so much. You want your sisters to still go to salon tomorrow. You hate your nephews. Your nephews are hungry. Your nephews in Africa are sleeping on the street. Your nephews are known as the poorest of them all. But you wear makeup a week. And God is speaking to you direct through an apostle. And the reason why I get like this with some of you women is because imagine this is at the altar Jerry is standing here. If Jerry Eze says stop wearing makeup, none of you will ever talk to Jerry Eze like that. 
My sisters, do not take advantage that this apostle is a woman. God will put some of you to shame because God knows that some of you, you even try me so that you can get me out of Karak. If you get me out of Karak, don't ever get excited. You think God will punish me. The Lord said, don't taste me. And I have grace before the Lord. I'm not special, but I also know my place. And that's why I don't gloat over you. Don't gloat over me. And don't underestimate me because I came out like this. Because the things I speak, we are in the end times. And I play too much. Sorry, my sisters. I don't play that game. I don't play that like game. So let's close, my sisters. As we close, please, my sisters, go and pray fast about this. And just like I told all of you at first, Apple, David, Kode, come here. Just like I told all of you at first, it took me a while before God could convict me. And most of the time, I thought that I would never manage, even right now, because of women that like to bring doubt and so many rubbish around. They can make you feel like, oh, maybe I'm going to give you food now. The food is ready. They can make you feel like God is not speaking to you. But I'm convicted by God. And Cheryl knows I don't hate my sisters. Even right now, I've got sisters, women that wear makeup. I never go to them and start this topic. But when God sends me to spend a whole week and talk about it, it's for any those with ears, they shall hear. But don't come and defend what God is not defending. I'm begging you, my sisters. And to all of you who love your sisters, please wake up. And Christians, we need to stop the manipulation in the church. Every time we are called out and the topic is paining us, when I go bring Jesus preached with love, don't insult people. It, it, it vex me when demons come in this orderly manner and then when you check them, they want to remind you that Jesus is love. So when you came in a very bad belly, you didn't know then that Jesus was love. Kai kai. Ah, Kode. Me, I challenge you in the name of Jesus Christ. I fear God, though. Not man. So when you come here to manipulate, in fact, when you want to test me to scare me, it's a wrong move. I don't care if your police are holding gun. I'm not the type. Me, I fear God. And if God says speak, I would die speaking the truth for Jesus. But this thing that you're doing in this generation, it needs to stop the manipulation. The making scaring of people. Always intimidating people who speak the truth. Yesterday I was watching a video of a sister. Her name is Ebony online here. She was talking about this uh, Zimbabwean prophet, Java. She said, Bashan Java is really using witchcraft uh, and love. She said, God showed her a dream where love he was doing witchcraft. Every time I talk about people of God or things that are happening here, because of your rubbish underestimation with women who like to talk back, when I speak it is not right, but when other men speak it is right. No, Satan, even me have been called an apostle. I know you didn't expect this devil. My whole life, you have always questioned the authority and power over my life. Not any man. These people who watch me online, they don't even know how you send them. And if they knew, they would come where well, well. Oh, never. I don't have time. And that's why people hate me. Hate me for the truth, not for lies. I have helped my sisters to go to hell by being part of a fake world. I want to be the change that God wants me to be. I have allowed my friends to go to places where they are not supposed to be. Because we lived in a world, mm -mm, not anymore. Now I speak loud and louder for Jesus. And if the devil don't like it, well, I don't care. I don't care. Hmm? I don't care. And if you think that my passion is questionably, I'm very passionate for Jesus. I never yet knew how to read. There's nothing I've ever been successful in my life. The greatest thing I have in my life. Is those three children. My life has always been difficult. I never, I never had peace. Jesus kept me in his everything. That's why I cannot allow anybody to come in now. Sorry. If I shut you up, it's not because I choose. It's because I will not take another decision apart from the one that the Lord gave me. I'm sorry, my sisters. It's as simple as that. Peter, here, put this on the table. Come and give you things you bring to the table. Go there. Here. What is this? The sauce is almost finished, but anyway, you have a different sauce. The chicken. 
So when I when I look like I'm very aggressive, forgive me. My sister, I know what you mean about the passionate of Java. Java is a witch. I saw, I'm going to share the video of Ebon. I want all of you to see it. The woman was showed in, a, in the dream that these men that you are watching through the videos, you are actually making covenants. So in the dream, she was shown that she's in a relationship with him. She was questioning why. They are sleeping with you. Okay. Because you don't want to believe. And this is what happens when God brings somebody who speaks the truth. The devil goes in front to take the character and any credibility over that person. And you help Satan on this page. But me, I'm not worried about it. I know that a lot of you who come to bring problem here, be underestimating me, doing all of this rubbish. God will get you. You think it's easy to stand here for you people to mock, joke, laugh at me, poke me, pam, 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 every day. For you people to come and ask me, why are you quarreling? As if I'm your mama child. As if you and me have ever been met by the power, even if I tell you why I'm angry, are you going to change my life? People who only see anger and they are friends when they are speaking truth. If it was a woman here naked with breasts, doing my daughter is fresh, oh, my daughter, stars will be running like my sister. That's why you are a wicked generation. If you ask me why I'm angry, I'm angry because your father Satan is a dog. <laughs> Code uh, here, here, come and save the table, please. Bring the cot water is already on the table. Hello. You have everything? Yeah. Hey, you can put some. You can put some Rose Fisse here. Okay. And Rose Fisse. Now, so, Ibi. And that's why when the devil is promoting rubbish, you don't see on the internet. They want your head to always be in Skompozono. For what? For what? They are accusers of all men. Accusers of all brethren. That's what they are working for. No wonder they want you or me to die. Any pastor who is wearing makeup and they are sitting in a church, you think if they have not given their life to God completely, they will teach you about these things I teach about makeup? Holy Spirit has never convicted them. He doesn't even speak to them. How can they know the things of the Lord? You only know the mystery and the secrets of heaven when God starts to speak to you. Apostle, And that's just the truth. So a lot of us are faking out here. In fact, instead of jealousy me, sister, let me ask her, sister, mm, your name, or oh, let me see your name, mommy, because you look like my mother's age. You, you are Francine's age. I saw you. What's your name, my sister? Hmm? I beg. Let me go back small, small. Give me one minute. This sister who asked me, Sister Judian, you remove your comment, Sister Judian. You ask me, Rachel, why the quarrel always be talking? Yes, mama, at your age. Why did you bleach your street? Why a quarrel? Why did you bleach? Why are you born one color and you will die another color? That's my question for you. And since we are free and open, you ask question, I ask question. You can drink a cake for hours, cat. I gave you sap there already and there's water in the living room. I said, Rosfi, say. There's a problem. What? Here, the machine is done, baby. You want to drink in this? Okay. Yeah, you drink a lot when you take these cups. That's why you keep them so that you can be drinking like, like rivers. So let me close my sisters. Let me go and feed my children. Tomorrow, we are going to take it by color. Hmm? We are going to take it by skin color where you were born and we are going to put it in the scripture what the Lord means and says for us. And the truth is very painful and bitter. But if we don't know each other on a personal level, I also don't want you to cross this lane and come to talk to me on a personal level. Let's stay spiritual. If you want to know about God, ask me about God. 
If I'm angry, why I'm loud, why I speak Nigerian accent, why I look like this, it's too personal and none of your business. And by the Holy Spirit of the Lord, the Lord told me by His grace, He never allowed none of you to even come and talk to me about that. That's the wasted time that the devil won't give you, which I will not allow. So I will treat you bad because it's not of God. But if you want to get me, and we can all sit down and share wisdom and knowledge, and I'm always ready to learn from somebody else because even me, there are people I can learn from that God is speaking through certain things they've heard in heaven that I've not yet heard because of levels of spirituality. I'm willing and gladly enough to learn. But if you ask me, why am I quarreling? Why do I look angry? Especially when you just come, I don't have time for you. Before you could ask me that personal question, are we friends? Do I know you? Did God say you should ask me that? What does it benefit heaven when you ask me that? Nothing. And before you clothe me with anger, because it's not just a comment, why are you always angry? Mm -mm. It's sorcery. You are witches with chantlers. You want to leave anger here. But only me can know if I'm angry. It doesn't matter what you see. Only me can know I'm angry because anger is not just something you see. It's a feeling deep within. And by the will and the grace of God, the Lord said, I'm allowed to be angry, but I should not sin. So who are you trying to scare in the first place? I didn't think so. Don't come with manipulation here. I fight like I'm fighting a human being in the, in the face when it comes to my father's kingdom. And that's the reason why he gave me the word and the knowledge. I'm in my righteous, judicial restriction, ordained by the Father in heaven. Move me if you can move me. Because the one who put me here is the only one who can move me. And nothing to do with pride or arrogance. He's a God of order. You didn't put me here for you to have anything to say. You come to receive what he pours through me. And I will also receive what he pours through you. The rest, excuse me, excuse me. That's the manipulation you have put in the body of Christ. And that's why you walk up to people of God and speak anyhow. No, 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 not here. And if a person of God responds to you in a way that you don't like, then all of a sudden you have Jesus more than them. Then you remind them children of God are not supposed to act like that. You should have known that because you already know about God. Why did you try? Thou shalt not test or provoke. A lot of you move in provocation and you don't even know that you're provokers. No wonder God never take your side, though. You keep reporting people before the presence of the Lord. Nothing. Your moral, your character, your boldness, just like our sister, our elder mother here. Francine, that one who asked me why I'm angry. She's your generation. Sister Judy Ann is too old to behave like a 15-year-old on Facebook. But I guess when you are bundles and you are something in your hands, the devil can fool you. Sister Judy Ann, you are too old, my sister. We are supposed to be children of God at all times. Not only when you are in somebody else's face. <clears throat> you lie. You play victim at last. Me, I was sent for this generation to teach the truth. Also to show those that are being bullied by the people of the world and test and provoke how to respond. God says thou shalt never test an, a man. So that's why I give reverse psychology. If you test me, the response you got is exactly the intention you set in your house and in your heart when you were writing that comment. <laughs> if you don't know in spirit and in truth like the papas of yours, they don't tell you. Me, I'll teach you.
go and eat. Yes, my sisters. And I just said the way it is. I don't sugarcoat it, and I do not. I will never sugarcoat scripture. I'm aggressive for the things of God. God knew who he was sending. That's why those of you women who come with funky nonsense here, I know how I respond to you. It's intentional, and I mean it. It's when I need to tell people, when demons come to you and do who? You ever see demons try you? Demons don't taste. Demons come to do their work. So I don't give any spirit that comes to do destructive work because a demon never comes to test you, kill, steal, and destroy. I don't give time. And a lot of you, you are too wicked and mean savages out here. You want to treat people of God like we do not know God. A lot of you women, this message makes you respond like this because of one thing. The fact that you love makeup more than God is the reason why you're going to get tempered with yourself. This has nothing to do with me. This is the fact that most of you, yeah? Sister Sharon, Ini Mini, am I lying? Sister Karen, Shamwa, most of you, the pain is coming from the fact that if you, you can't live without makeup. And that's the funny thing. When did you ever start living comfortably that you can't live without makeup? It's that painful thing. Instead of being convicted, the rebellious, retarious demon, it starts to look for fights anywhere it can fit. Yes, to change the topic from the makeup, you see how they wanted to shift it. That's the spirit of destruction in Jesus' name. That's why I wanted to rebuke my sisters. And I'm thankful that female saw what I was trying to do. That spirit of destruction. It did take the message. The message is undiluted. I did not come here to tell people, you can put makeup whenever you feel like. I said, God stopped me. If he stopped it for me, he don't like it for you. You will not make me sugarcoat it anyhow. But instead of staying to the topic, people want to go under. Uh -uh, masters, if you go under, the Lord even give me wisdom. Because now, you want us to leave the Holy Spirit to come in the flesh. My sister, me, I can fight you in the spirit and your flesh injured too. <laughs> you think God was going to send me to a Kai Kai generation that is rebellious like yours? Like a fool? No, 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 no. No, mommy, no. Wrong move. Yes. So let me close, my sisters. I'll see you people tomorrow. We are going to take it up by scripture. We are going to talk about makeup this whole week. Fake hair. Nails. We are going to get into waxing. All of these things. We are going to talk about them. And we are going to go through scripture as well. And see where does it align with our God. Where does it give us salvation? Where does it give us enlightenment? And where does it give us power and authority in Christ? Because anything you want to keep in your life should bring you close to God, should win you more favor, should win you more empowerment in your faith, in reading the Bible, in prayer, in worship, and in fearing God with fear and trembling. If it's not doing that, if it's making you not even think, you don't need it. But we are also going to go deep in scripture to talk about why by scripture makeup does not collide with Jesus. And God never made it. Because if God was part of this, it would have started a long time ago. But in the old age, it was only one woman that did this. Just happened. Not the children of God. So we're going to go deep. And I'm not here to fight with none of you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not here to convict you. I'm not here to fight with you. But I'm here to proclaim the gospel undiluted. And I do not need your opinion or your words to make it. Mm -mm. I will speak it the way it is. Let God deal with me. And if you don't want to receive it, you just stand and go. If you don't want to listen, it's no problem. But at the end of the day, let God be preached and diluted. And if somebody they say Esther did makeup, there's nowhere Esther did makeup. And that's why if you read the Bible well, well, you are going to understand. There is no way where Esther did makeup. Now, Laila, you talk about. There is no way that Esther did makeup. And my sisters, this is why you need to get into the Bible. 
I'm begging you. Because even somebody asking here, what about trousers? My sisters, that's why I say to my God, my, my, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. My sister, when you talk about trousers, please, before I close two minutes, trousers has been there. Mary wore trousers. You know the Indian outfits that people wear? There's a trousers like a hammer time inside. That's a trousers. You know the short pit coats that women used to wear like a panty panty to keep their skates well? That's also a trousers. When it comes to trousers for us women, what God has stopped my sister, this is what the Holy Spirit told me when I started ministry. We are allowed to wear trousers, but the trousers shouldn't be tight. And the mistake that we make with trousers, we are wearing trousers, this, all out, all of it out. The Lord tell me every time I come for ministry that my shirt, if I kneel down, this is what I do. He told me this, the Holy Spirit himself, not for me. Please, let me speak for the one who told me. He told me the, one, the things I wear, I should be able to do this without my bum going outside. So when it comes to trousers, please, my sister, that's it. Those are now people speaking out of context because trousers you can wear on top of a dress. The new clothing that I'm going to start wearing, the Lord made me remove all my clothes I'm ironing. I'm going to be wearing trousers on top of a dress. The trousers that God doesn't want, it is the sexual trousers, my sisters. There is trousers to wear to be normal. And my sisters, you know the trousers we have. We have trousers that all of this is out, my sisters. Let's talk truth. The trousers that we have, all of this is out. I go show so we can see ourselves. That's the thing that the Lord don't like. And if you spend time in the presence of the Holy Spirit, He will even tell you what to wear or not. That's why I'm telling you, conviction is not from man. It's from the Lord. Have a blessed night. I'll see you people. We're going to continue this week. <laughs> Please, let's inform other people about the issues of makeup and tell them the truth. Because at the end of the day, we need to open our eyes. Hmm? May God bless you. My sister Mary, you are right. Trousers were supposed to be covered. It's not showing. Please, trousers is to cover. You can wear trousers, my sister, with a very big top. Have you not seen how I dress? It is expressed for one thing, to be modest in the sight of God, not for me. May God bless all of you. I'll see you people tomorrow and we're going to continue. Love over you. Let me, let me go and eat now. My boys are waiting for me. They go chop. Bye-bye.